Yeah. It's actually a hard holiday for me, but that's okay. Oh, I shame. Cinnamon. Yeah, no, mine, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, it, it is, some people, it's a very hard holiday. Um, and yeah, it's, it's um, a sad one. I, I just work today. So my, that's the best way. Yeah. Some years are better. Um, my mom's been gone a while, but I'm okay with it. She had dementia, and so it was a gift. But I, I had an infant son about 20 years ago. So some years are okay. And other years are not. Yeah. <laughs> so I just worked all day, and Melissa was supposed to do tonight. And I'm like, no, you got three little ones. I'm doing tonight for you. Oh, so, fantastic. Yeah, that, that, that is so awesome. Yeah, my mom also had dementia for seven years, and it was a blessing after seven yeah. years of dementia. That's about how long my mom had. And, mm. and it was actually, um, it was the best thing for us. We mm. just ended up, even though she didn't know me, she, she had lived through some trauma. And when she forgot it all, I got to see who her spirit was. And it was the best years best year oh. smile and be happy and you know she was just content and, oh, and it was in the last six months that it actually was difficult she never got uh, angry or anything she just sort of was really easy going and and did things well but then she uh fainted had some fainting spells and the last one she hit her head and had an additional injury and so about six months where she was bed bound otherwise and that was that was that's why just six months of it but at least yeah. that that is that is yeah I, that that is a that yeah, is a, a great time I, I learned to we learned to love each other in a very different way and it was great you do you do it's yeah. a very different uh, thing altogether yeah i yeah. i can i can relate to that very mm -hmm. much so very much so. I actually got got to see a different mom as well. So, yeah, yeah. We she she tickled me that, and I always one of her things I think about, and this is actually sweet because I, uh, she would tell me she loved me. I'd say I love you, mom, and she'd always go what? and just the biggest grin every time. Uh, and I was like, uh, she may not say it, but she she told me in her own way. So yeah. No, yeah. that is so lovely. That really is. Hi, Pam. Lovely to have you in class with us today. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Pam, whereabouts are you? I'm uh, in uh, Colorado, southeast of Denver. Oh, Colorado. Right. Right. So what is the time there now? Uh, eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, it's ten o'clock in the morning the next day for me. So <laughs> I'm where are you? Ahead. I'm in Perth, Australia. Oh, I was just at another class, and he was from Perth. That's my husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I enjoy this class. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, we're a husband and wife team. <laughs> so great. yeah. But both very different and both both loving every minute of being in get set up. Hi Shirley, you're back. Oh, <laughs> in. That's awesome. Shirley was in my class this morning where I did a Mother's Day coffee more uh, half a social chat. And Shirley was in the social chat this morning. So that was awesome. And uh, Beverly, lovely to have you in class too. Awesome. Where are you from, Beverly? Oh, Beverly's quiet for the moment. Maybe you can type it in for me. It'll be awesome. We do have Sharon here with us. If you've got any technical problems at the moment or anything you want to ask, please feel free to ask them as well. It's lovely. She won't stay all the time, but she'll be here for a while at the beginning. Beverly is from Gainesville, Florida. Oh, very nice. Thank you, Beverly. <laughs> awesome. Gainesville, Florida. That's great. And the time there? Beverly? It's 10, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. So you're 12 hours apart from me. Oh, okay. Where Excellent. I like to join. Sorry? I, I did not hear where you are located. Ah, I'm located in Perth, Australia. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my husband and I moved here uh, three years ago from South Africa. And uh, so, yeah, we had 
I had 63 years in South Africa and I've had three years here in, in Australia and I'm loving it. Hi, Wanda. Lovely to have Wanda joining us as well. This is going to be very much an interactive class. You, I want to hear your stories of encounters. I have some, but I'd love to hear all of yours as well. Hi, Wanda. Lovely to have you. Hi, Sue. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Great to have you in class. Wanda, where are you from again? Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. That's right, Charlotte, North Carolina. Excellent. And how about Pam? I didn't hear where she was from. Uh, Pam, Colorado. Oh. From Colorado. So we've got a right mixture of people from all over the place with all sorts of stories of their own. Um, Sharon, whereabouts are you based? I'm in Williamsburg, Virginia, near uh, Virginia. Richmond. Yeah. yeah, Richmond in Virginia. Very, right. Very near Charlotte, there was Wanda. Ah, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. All right, I'm going to start sharing my screen, but it's going to be going in and out. We're going to talk and we're going to just turn this into a, oopsie, I can't turn it at the moment because this is in the way. Um, turn it into a PowerPoint there, into a presentation. Right. Encounters with wildlife. What I mean by wild animals is anything from a spider or an ant to a great big animal. So we have encounters all the time. Funny encounters, exciting encounters, scary encounters, um, memorable encounters with all sorts of creatures. And today is the time to share some of the things that you've had along the way. And we're going to work through the different types of encounters and hopefully people will have their own stories to tell about the different uh, places and encounters in life. So that'll be great. Just want to see Donna's joining us. Oh, lovely to have you in class again, Donna. Excellent. Right. Now get set up. We learn from each other. And so it's ideal if you've got your cameras on. It just makes it special because then we can see you and uh, see your expressions as well. And if you want, oh, hold on. I've got to do a recording. I'll have to stop sharing and press record. Otherwise, you won't get a recording of the, um, there we go. Should be right now. Let's see, what's that? Uh, are we live? No, not yet. I'll see. Ah, there it goes. Now we are. Now we're into where we should be. Right. So if you want a recording, it will be a recording afterwards. Um, and we also have, uh, if you're joining by live streaming, the best way is to actually sign up and register so you can actually take part in the classes. Um, we've also, Get Set Up is not paid to, if, if we mention any products, uh, it's purely by chance that we do. And for everybody that's with us, well, happy Mother's Day. Uh, I hope you've had a lovely day. Um, I've done virtual grandmothering because my grandchildren are not available. They're in a different continent. Uh, and that was awesome. And I actually got to be with my one son, which was really special. So I hope you had as special a day as I did. Uh, right, a little about me. I, uh, my name is Sue. I live in Perth, Australia. I've been an educator for 44 years, but what I love about Get Set Up, I no longer educate. I share. I share what I know. I share my ideas. I share what I've done. Uh, and that is so different to educating. I still educate, but I love my time on Get Set Up where I, I can share and interact with my peers. And that to me is really special. Uh, I enjoy creating and making things, in, uh, puzzles being one of my favorites. Uh, I have a great love of animals. That's why we have the Australian animals, the African animals, and our encounters with animals. And as I said before, love being a guide. So today we're going to discuss encounters with animals, insects, birds, you name it. Um, close encounters, memorable encounters, heartwarming encounters. So I hope 
that what you are going to learn from today is just other people's experiences with wild animals. So, ah, let's start. This little bee, if one here surely knows well, this is my little bandicoot. He comes from the forest every night. We've got a little forest about 50 meters from us. And he comes and helps himself to the flowers in my garden, some of the seed from the bird cedar, or some um, of the dog food. He comes and helps himself to, or his wife. They come between the two of them and help themselves every oh. evening to something to eat. And here, my husband caught him just standing up uh, at the archway, helping himself to a flower which he obviously thought was very tasty. He's not too scared of us. He's, a, he's not that keen on the dogs, but we'll, we'll watch them. And if the little one chases him, then he scoots back outside and disappears back into the forest until later when she's not around or when she's asleep at night in her bed. Then uh, he comes sneaking into the garden and helps himself. Uh, but he's the same family as the bandicoot, uh, as the um, kangaroo, but just very, very much smaller. Yes, Pam. Oh, I was just going to ask, bandicoot, you said, huh? Yes, bandicoot. Yeah, very, very cute little animal uh, that uh, we find in Australia. One of the marsupials, Australia has more marsupials than any other continent in the world. We have most of our animals are marsupials. It's quite amazing. Um, so, yes, he's, he's very, very cute. Now, oh, ace, close encounters. I hope some of you have had close encounters. These are three of mine. The first one was a warthog. I was taking a photo of him and I got on my haunches to take the photo. And my friend said to me, stand up and walk backwards. And I said, no, no, I haven't quite got the, she said, stand up and walk backwards. So I stood up and he wasn't more than that away from my camera lens. I hadn't realized that this warthog had actually walked right up to my camera. And that's why I was getting this wonderful picture that I thought. Um, but a, being a wild animal, you don't go that close to them, not unless you are a little bit foolhardy. So I stood up and I walked backwards. I didn't want a horn in my face so he he was a close encounter the the leopard um we were camping in the bush in in africa not in one of the the big camps uh it was just in um an open area you know just north of johannesburg and i climbed out of my tent and went to go and make the coffee for the morning and something attracted me that was above me and it was the tail of the leopard swinging he was lying on the branch. I hadn't noticed him at all. And I just stopped dead still. And I thought, okay, I'm going to be breakfast for a leopard um, because I'm much smaller than the things that leopards eat. And I just walked slowly backwards. Others had opened their tent flaps. And when I when he, he jumped down and ran away, when I turned around, their eyes were like saucers and my heart was beating like you can't believe. So that was the closest I ever got to a leopard. Who has had a close encounter? Any of you had an encounter with something small? It doesn't have to be a big animal. Who's had an encounter with something small or big? I have. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Donna, what have you had? Okay, well, I was in the Galapagos Islands, and I came out, and there was an iguana sitting in my shoe outside of the beach oh. area islands. And then there Ooh. were, like, um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah, it was, like, a hundred of iguanas on the beach, like they were all sunning and everything. So I quick got one of my friends to take a picture and said, nobody's going to believe this at home. And I was out there just sitting there and they didn't bother me, but it was like, you know, everybody said, aren't you afraid? I said, no, because I I've held one before and everything. I didn't think they were going to do anything to me. But what a wonderful experience. Yeah, it was wow. Cool. Oh, very cool experience to have. Wow. 
Uh, anybody else with a good close encounter? Pam? Yeah. You have um, I was in Maui um, late January and we just came across this beach that was known for windsurfing and great surfing. And so we just went there to watch, but then we found uh, if you go down on the beach and you go in a certain direction, there's just dozens of giant Hawaiian sea turtles sunning themselves or up on the beach. Yeah. It was oh, really neat. What a wonderful thing to see. It was. Whoa. That is awesome. Anybody else with an experience of something like that? That is beautiful. Well, the third picture there is an elephant. I wasn't standing outside. I used to work with elephant, but that was more when they, they were in um, being helped to get back into the wild. But this particular encounter, um, we were in a car. And one of the things you learn very, that you know, you never hoot at an elephant. Elephants do not like loud sounds. And uh, we'd been sitting on the road waiting for about half an hour. And this elephant was just standing in the middle of the road watching everybody. And some cars had pulled off to the side. And um, my, my friend just turned around to get something from the back. And she hit the hooter with her elbow. Well, up came the ears of this elephant. I have never seen so many cars going to reverse and reverse down a dust road so fast. It was unbelievable. Everybody just took off backwards. And he came down flapping his ears. And then he stopped and, and sort of trumpeted as much as to say, I've scared you now, haven't I? And then he, oh. he ambled off the road. But we waited until he'd ambled quite a long way before the cars then took off sort of in a convoy of cars going past him and, and, and away from him. But, uh, yeah, that was an interesting one because you don't want an elephant to tread on your car. <laughs> you won't have much of you or the car left. All right. Has anybody wow. had experiences with sea creatures? Anybody been snorkeling or um, scuba diving where they've had a chance or walking under the sea where they've had a I, chance? I swam with, with the dolphins in Mexico. Oh, beautiful. I did in South yeah. Africa too. It's awesome. Yeah, they're, they're really funny creatures. They're, their skin is like, like a, a rubber boot or something, you know? Mm. It's, yeah. it's kind of rubbery. But no, uh, no, it's what they, they are. Would do, they would. Oh. They told us to uh, lay out on a like we were floating, mm -hmm. and these these um, the dolphins would come along, and they would push our feet, and then we'd jump up, you know, and then into the water, kind of like that whale is doing there. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Oh, that is so beautiful. We, we did it in South Africa and there was a child who was with us from Reach for a Dream. Now, those are children who are terminally ill and they get a chance to have one of their bucket list dreams come true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it was so interesting. The dolphins all went straight to that child. They ignored the rest of us. And they were all around. And the person who was with us said they can sense if somebody is ill and they always go to the person who's ill. Yeah. And they went and they were around the, the child and they were pushing it and letting it swim with them. And when the child had had enough and went back onto the boat, then they took an interest in us and swam around us and <laughs> played around us and then took off back into the deep. But it was so amazing all there were four dolphins and all four went to this child it was absolutely amazing to see mm. I, for me that was the, the the best experience not for for i mean i loved swimming with them but to see the dolphins with a child that was that they knew and they they looked after the child yeah, in, in um, Bali, we, we went to Bali a lot because of our visa. We have to leave every three months. And Bali was the closest island to go to. So uh, we went to Bali quite a bit. Um, I walked under the sea um, in Bali. And that was amazing. You put this huge helmet on. 
and you just go under the sea and you walk along the bottom. All the fish swim past you and you can put your hands on the coral and you can feed the fish. They give you something to feed the fish and all the fish come along and they, they eat from your hands. Um, and then you walk along a path. There's a thing to hold on to just so you don't get lost. And then you come back to the, your boat and you, you climb back up onto the boat. That was an amazing experience. I had my grandchildren with me and it was awesome to, to see their reaction to, um, to the fish coming so close and swimming past their noses. And uh, at first they, the, they were a little nervous and a bit, then suddenly it, it dawned on them, these fish can't hurt me. And they had a lovely time. Uh, we also used to scuba um, a snorkel and I had a sea turtle come and swim next to me, which was, was an amazing thing. So uh, anybody else been swimming under the sea or looking at the, the fish under the sea? Yes, I have with that too. I was in, um, I was, when I was in the Galapagos with the naturalists, we were snorkeling and we went in an underground cave and he said, now don't be scared. I'm going to take you inside a cave. And he, he grabbed my hand and pulled me in with him. And he said, uh, do you see the sleeping sharks? I was trying to backpedal with my fins, trying to get out of there. He said, relax, they're not gonna do anything, they're sleeping. But that's as close as I've ever gotten to oh, with the sick no. shark. The sick sharks were laying there. And I said, ah. I, I kept saying, they probably have one eye open. I kept, when we came out of the water, I kept saying to the naturals, how do we know they don't have one eye open looking? And he said, you're not gonna have to worry about that. <laughs> oh, I don't know so much. I would worry about that. Yeah, that, that's as close with that. But I did when I, I did when I was in um, Maui. I was up close with all the sea turtles because you could, you know, when you're snorkeling, they come right past you. They did it in yeah. the Galapagos. The turtles too, you yeah. know, and they come amazing. up from the bottom. They are beautiful. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was did you, beautiful. Did you know they can stay 10 hours underwater? They take enough air to spend 10 hours under, as long as they don't do too much moving around, they can last for between 10 and 12 hours underwater before having to come up again for fresh air, which I find amazing. I yeah, really I don't think we, I don't think I could stay down there 10 hours without air without oh, air <laughs> no absolutely not but they can they are quite amazing with yeah, what they can do front. oh they are awesome right now birds let's have a look at birds we some people love birds some people are a bit scared of birds um these are actually pictures all pictures of my own except for the magpie because uh, i couldn't take a picture of the magpie dive bombing i was more worried about getting my head out of the way than than anything else we, the the black parrot was sitting up in our, our bushes at our gate he loves the bottle brush he will eat all the little scent and then break off the head and drop all the heads on the ground um, when he's finished with what he wants out of the bottle brush. Uh, they, they're not that many on the west coast of these black parrots. They're mainly on the east coast. So we were very fortunate. There's a, a family of them that live in our little forest. So we see them quite often. Um, they come, come and help themselves there. But um, the pictures of the owls was something that was incredibly special to me. Living in South Africa, we had, we lived not in the city. We lived between two cities. So we were kind of out of, uh, out of the, the, the main um, area. And there were some owls that lived there. And the crows were really rough on the owls so when I heard the crows coming I used to go outside and chase the crows so the owls could sleep because they would go for the owls during the day and I don't know I just I didn't know that the owls actually were watching and seeing that but the the, ma the male owl the fatter of the two those are eagle owls he every morning would hoot at me as soon as I came out he would hoot as much as to say good morning and I would talk to him and then carry on with whatever I was doing. If I didn't talk to him, he would fly over the top of my head, just, just over the top of my head as much as say, I'm here. And so it was a wonderful experience. Then 
the owners of the property put up a, an owl house up in the very tall tree. And there's mom and the two little babies in the owl house. And these little babies were the sweetest things. But the one was stronger than the other. And he kicked the other one out. And it fell down to the ground. And um, it was all it, it, it didn't have feathers yet. It just had the soft little down. So we put up a long ladder. And mom and dad were watching. And I carried it up. And I put it back in the house. And I thought, well, maybe they're going to kick it out. Maybe they're not. Because birds usually don't accept a, a, a baby that's been touched. But mother flew straight in and clucked all over it and talked to it and was very happy to have it back in the home. But not a week later, it was turfed out again by brother or sister. And this time it stayed on the ground. And there is a picture of it down. We made a, an area for it uh, with so that dogs and other animals couldn't get to it. And mom and dad came and fed it and slowly it grew and it was able to then learn to fly. And the four um, owls stayed in the area. Uh, they were still there when I left. But this little one became very much part of it. And again, it, it also used to talk in the mornings. Um, and so I had a real sort of affinity with this little owl family. Uh, they were really special for me. It was a, a, an encounter that I will never forget. Is that in Australia? Not, no, not no, in South Africa. Africa. In South, South Africa. Africa. Mm. Now it was in South Africa. It was such a beautiful encounter. I, that was the one thing I, re, I, I had to say goodbye to my dog, but it had a good home and my cat and that had a good home. Uh, but, I, but I really found it hard to say goodbye to the owls as well. Oh. They, they had become part of the family as well. Um, in Australia, we have a problem with magpies for about two weeks of the year when they mm. have their eggs and their nesting. They Not all magpies, but certain magpies will go for you if they have got their nest is too close to wherever you are. And they will – and they – they target the same person time and time and they seem to remember the people because they'll leave everybody else and they'll see that person coming and choop, they target that person and they'll they'll go and hit the, the back of your helmets or uh, fly really close and sort of almost grab your hair um, and they, they've been known to hurt people. So we, we do have to be careful for those two weeks with the magpies. They really are a menace during their breeding season. But for the rest of the time, they're very docile creatures. But yeah, so we have, who else has had an encounter with a bird of some sort? Anybody? Me again. <laughs> yeah, lovely, Donna. I'm delighted. Yes. <laughs> what have you had? Awesome. Okay. When I was in Quito, I stayed in a tree house and um, it was called the cloud forest area. So you could look out your tree house window and see, you know, the, the clouds coming by. But we would get up early and walk and I would always take the sugar water and put it in my hand in a little bowl. And the hummingbirds were so used to people, they would come up and they would just sit in your hand. So I had two birds on one hand and they were just sitting there sipping away. And they just sound like a little airplane when they take off because they buzz right through, you know. And it yeah, was so wings. funny. And was so funny when the two left, two more would come. As long as you had sugar water, they were going to come to your hand and sit on them. Of course, in the Galapagos, no matter where you are in Ecuador, it seems like the animals had no fear or birds had no fear of, of people at all, uh, that which is, is really a great awesome. experience. That, that is awesome. I must say here in Australia, it's very different to, to Africa or anywhere else that I've been. The animals come first. Uh, they'll have signboards that say bandicoot yeah. crossing if there's a bandicoot crossing you stop your car you let the animal cross and then you you carry on and the kangaroos live around the homes uh, they live around the hospital they 
they choose where they want to be and um, they're there. They're wild and come and go as they please. Um, so it, it really is awesome. The animals definitely um, have, have first place and, and we have second place um, here, which is for me awesome. I, I think it's amazing. Anybody else funny the story? People, those funny people drive on the wrong side of the road down there. No, I think you drive on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> I would be completely lost if I was driving on the other side of the road. I was too. I let Brian do all the driving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Anybody else with a story? Wanda, you got a story of birds or animals? not you're just listening <laughs> that's awesome and melinda as well and beverly uh great let's continue and see what we're looking at now uh next one is whoops um heart stopping moments where you've had a heart stopping moment along the way um some sometimes if you are not careful you will have a, an animal sniff inside your tent while you're there you'll you'll hear the panting and you'll you'll see the edge of your tent wobbling a little um there's an area where we stay it's uh, a cat sort of like a camp next to the um Kruger National Park, but the animals can wander in from the Kruger into there, and people have their homes there, and you can go camping there as well. Um, I opened my tent one morning, and there was a pole outside my tent. I don't remember having a pole next to my tent. Looked up the pole, and it was a giraffe. So it was standing <laughs> eating, and this was its leg, not a pole <laughs> at all. Um, I could have put my hand out and touched it. I just kept very quiet and waited for it to move away. But it was awesome. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I, I lived in the city. I was born in the country, right in the middle of nowhere, uh, but moved into the city when I was young. And so I became very much a city slicker where there weren't any wild animals, except if you went out um, and were over the holidays and things like that to work in the different places or to travel in amongst the animals but then when I got married I moved close I moved into the bush and they had a one of those um barn door type of where the top opens and then the bottom opens I couldn't work out why you had that I opened the top and I was about to open the bottom and somebody yelled stop and I looked over the top and instead of my mat, there was a rinkhouse, which is, I suppose, the same as your rattler. And uh, he was my he was my mat. And I would have put my foot on him. I would have opened the door and just trodden right onto this creature. So I learned very carefully that that was why we had stable doors. So you looked over the top first. And once you'd done that, you were able to then do what you needed to do. So those, those are amazing. And of course, the hippo who looks so docile and so um, easygoing are one of the most dangerous animals in the world. So those jaws are huge and those teeth are sharp. So you don't get between a hippo and its baby at any time because you and they can move fast they they might look slow they might look big but they actually are not I think my husband's best um, heart stopping moment was he's a great gardener and I love gardens as well but he does all the hard work and I decide where I want this flower or that flower and he's very accommodating he does everything the way um, that so we end up with a really beautiful garden between us but he was digging something and the next minute I heard him yell for me and I knew the tone of voice there was something wrong and I went rushing off to find out and there coming over the wall were these legs and the legs came over the wall and then the head came over the wall and it was one of the giant hunting spiders they are the size of a dinner plate so they are really, really big spiders. And we'd been told they are here, but we'd never seen them. But this thing came over the wall and it looked at us. And obviously, Michael had 
shouted and what have you, and it decided no. And so then it retreated back up behind the wall. So we gave it, a, we just hoped that it went back into the bush and stayed in the bush or chose somebody else's garden, not ours, because we do work in the garden and, and do a lot of things in our garden. We really didn't want him back. As much as he's a creature of nature, he can stay there <laughs> very happily. But it was a hard stopping moment because Michael was very close to the wall. He was digging right at the wall at the time. So it was a little heart stopping. So who's had a heart stopping moment? Any of you had a heart stopping moment where, and it can be yes. a small heart stopping. Yes. Who's had the heart stopping moment? Okay. I was in, I was in Morocco. And I was up close. We were walking around the soots and the tents and all in the area. And um, I'll never forget, we were in there with the storytellers and the, the guys with the, the cobras that come out of the baskets when they play their flutes. Okay. So my friend from the United Kingdom that was with me, she decided we were going to take a picture of this little tiny toy that she was entering in a contest as most unusual places okay so I took it and put it between eight cobras I gave it to the guy and let him put it there right and when they were singing well you know and whatever you know playing the flute with the cobras I reached they they took their head and knocked it down you know like the like the little toy and I had a reaction like you would with your dog or your cat. I said, no. And I shook my finger at these cobras. Then before not thinking, I reached in the, the, the ring without anybody looking at me. And I just went in and picked up this toy and sat there and started like scolding the cobras. And I <laughs> I thought about what I did and was ready to pass out after I thought about it. But the, 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 the snake charmer come up to me and he said, Oh, you make good snake charmer. They didn't even budge. <laughs> I Ooh. didn't believe it. And I'm scared to death of snakes. I guess I broke my fear of that. Definitely. Definitely. You broke your fear of snakes. I, wow. And, and I came back, I showed people the picture and they told me you are crazy. I said, yep, I, I got to agree with that one. Yeah. <laughs> you do things without thinking. And then afterwards, it's a case of, did I really do that? <laughs> right. Wow. That is an awesome story. Sure. That is well, an and amazing the other story. One was well, and the other one was when I was in Edmonton, Canada. When you get out of your car in certain areas, there's like a herd of moose, full size, mama, babies, everything. And I got out and I was taking pictures and I had one standing in back of me, didn't even know it. And, and my friends were saying, don't back up. There's a big moose behind you. And I'm there like, and it's one of my favorite animals. And I'm there like, okay, whatever. I just stood there frozen and he just walked away. But I was in the middle of them taking pictures. Wow. That is the crazy tourist people. <laughs> but, but that makes for the your holiday. is kind of like the uh, hippo. If you get between them and their babies, watch out. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, I, that is so awesome. Yeah, talking ab ab about your moose, I we were sitting in, in camp, we'd had dinner, and we had all our food in front of us. And um, everybody started looking at me and I thought, have I got food on my face? You know, why is everybody staring at me? They said, just don't turn your head, just continue eating. But there is a, a kudu behind you which is also a big um antelope and this thing put its head over my shoulder helped itself to a piece of corn on, on the cob and and off it went <laughs> and yeah i had this thing peering right over my shoulder um and, and its face touched against my face and 
I, I, I froze, unfortunately, because I think if I'd reacted and jumped up, it might have scared it. But it just helped itself and then off it went from my plate over my shoulder. That's the closest I've got to a, a, um, to a buck of, of any description, an antelope or that, in the wild. Obviously, in, in zoos and that, the petting places, you can do it. But in the wild, very, very different indeed. Um, uh, I got up to go to the bathroom the one night because your tent is here and the bathroom's over there. And um, I, I went and on my way back, a lion roared. Now, when lions roar, you can hear them for up to five kilometers. But you have no idea where in those five kilometers it might be. I don't think my feet touched the ground till I was back in the tent and zipped up. <laughs> and then I sort of sat there trying to catch my heart, put it back where it belonged and then go off to sleep. It took a while. But it was, it, it probably was very far away, but I wasn't taking any chances. Um, I didn't, because the, the people who had their homes there complained bitterly about having to replace their uh, hoses, their garden hoses, because the baby lions would chew holes in them. They would use them as a chew toy at night, and the next day they wouldn't be able to use the hose because it was full of holes. And they'd buy another one and then unless they packed it away, the baby lion would be there again the next night having a go at their, um, their hoses. So, yeah, so there were plenty of lion around. You just weren't sure how close. But lovely to hear all, all the stories. Now, another form of close encounter, this is a gentle close encounter. Lovely, happy cl close encounters with, with animals. The, the thing about a giraffe that I found so strange was their tongue is black. And so when you put your hand out to feed them, this long, and I, that, it's really long tongue, would come out almost like a snake and take it. And it was very soft and gentle. But your first reaction when you see something black coming towards you is to retract because you're expecting pink. And this isn't pink. And then out comes the hand and uh, the tongue. And it takes it for, from you so, so gently. And of course, koalas, they are the most beautiful creatures. As long as you don't put your hand near the face, they love to have you scratch their back and round their rump area. They really enjoy that. But they don't have such great eyesight. So if you bring your hand to their face, they, they think you're going to hurt them. And then those sharp claws will come out and you'll come off second best. So, But really, they are such lovely, gentle, gentle creatures. The, the orangutan had breakfast with me in Bali at the, at the um, and he, he would sit on his little platform behind my, where you were having your breakfast and he puts his hand down and helps himself to some of your breakfast. Um, and then the person who looks after him would say, no, 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 no. And then he'd take his hand back and he'd sit like this and sort of look at you as much as that. I mean, I can't have any of yours. And we'd feed him something that was good for him. And then he'd be very happy. And but they they're basically free to, to be around. Um, and they when when the trainer calls them, they come and they go back to and they've got a really big area for during the day. So only at breakfast time do they come to be amongst the people. Um, and then they they're still very wild so you don't you obviously can't interact too much with them but they are so gentle and their hands are enormous they've got these very long fingers they look as if they should be fantastic artists because they've got these beautiful long fingers that come down to help themselves to something needed to climb through the trees and swing through the branches they need that length of finger to make it strong enough to hold on but they really are lovely creatures as well who else has had an encounter with animals like that where they've either fed or touched beautiful creatures i have again that's <laughs> I fine was in donna oh yeah Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was in Australia and um, I stayed in a tree house in the outback with um, it was furnished. It was a nice place. But with the owners, they would give us um, her her mate. She would say, 
he would come up and say he he buys 50 pounds of potatoes every week to feed the wild animals. And, and he said, I don't see any of them. So when we were in the back, we went out on the porch and the wallabies coming out from the forest, they would be coming up and we'd be standing there handing them pieces of potato and they would gently take it out of your hand. I mean, they would just come up, they were wild and then they would go about their business. They would just take the potato right out of your hand. And that was a great experience. Yeah, particularly when you know they're wild and they'll just, that's the thing we we find here is that the, the kangaroo, we've got kangaroo about 500 meters from our home and they'll come and wander, wander past and uh, then they'll put go back to wherever they are. They're totally wild and yet they're very at ease with, with people. Um, there's a, a group that are outside the Rockingham Hospital. They feed on the grass outside there every day. So the people who are busy recuperating in hospital can sit and watch them while they're feeding and then they they disappear off and go uh, back into the bush. And then and the hospital's right in the center of a little city, but they're there every day doing their feeding and then off they go back into the bush. It's it's quite it, it, it's an extraordinary country altogether, I must say. Anybody else got another close encounter? Anybody else had a, a, a time? Well, I'll have a... to tell you about our spiders. Good, yeah. <laughs> we were in a <laughs> we were in a a resort town, I guess, on the east coast. It was, and. Uh, about the third day, I decided that I better take the bed apart and, and give it a good, you know, straighten out the sheets and everything, eh? So I went to pull the bed out from the wall and behind the headboard of the bed was just a mass of spiders. Well, Whoa. after that, I said to Brian, I said, I think we better go home. I said, uh, we weren't, this wasn't what we were expecting. And he said, oh, good. He says, we were thinking the same thing. <laughs> we didn't want to tell you. <laughs> so we went home the next day. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that is scary when you've got oh. something like that. Oh, that, that is really not, uh, not the nicest. <laughs> And you didn't know you'd been sleeping there for three days already. Yep. Yo. Yep. <laughs> right. Anybody else with something that they've had? Funny experiences, close encounters, anything along the way? Right. These are close encounters close to home. For me, um, we've got this little forest next to us. So um, the, the, this, this is a male kangaroo. They are so much bigger than a female kangaroo. The females are quite small in comparison, but you can see the size of the car behind that. He was quite happy to be around us, but I'm a little dubious of him. He's just too big for me. <laughs> He's taller than me, and I, I feel a little intimidated by him. But he, he's a, a, a really big, big boy uh, kangaroo. Uh, we have lizards in our forest. We have snakes. That's probably the biggest snake we've come across was sunning itself next to the path. We just walked around it and continued with the dogs going past it and carried on do, doing our walk. And he didn't worry about us. He was nice and warm in the sun. Uh, and of course, my little baby bandicoot. So those are close encounters close to home. So who's had a close encounter close to home? Something at your own home where you've encountered something, a possum or a, a, a something like that. Well, I told you about the skunk coming in the yard. Yes, your skunk <laughs> in the yard was good. Won't you want to tell it again for the others, Shirley, so the others know about it? When, when, when Kermit was just a puppy, um, I had to put him on a on a sixteen foot lead because I didn't have uh, all the holes in the fence in the yard uh, filled up yet, and uh, so I was out five o'clock in the morning with him, 
And, you know, I let him go do his business and such. And he, this cat came in the yard. And then I looked at it and no, that wasn't a cat. Well, by the time I realized what it was, he had turned around and sprayed Kermit right in the eyes. So I had to take him in the house and I called the vet and he said, well, the best thing is just get a, a real wet washcloth and, and put on his eyes. So I put him up on the vanity in the bathroom and, and did that with a washcloth. And he, he stood there like, oh, mommy, that feels so good. <laughs> and then, of course, for oh, a month, six weeks after that, he smelled like a skunk. So. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, anybody else? Oh, hi, Karen. Welcome. Anybody else got no. encounters close to home? <gasps> No, nobody else got any close encounters at home. Well, uh, in South Africa, we used to have snakes coming into the garden. Obviously, we had tortoises that came to visit. Uh, at night, we could hear the jackal and we could hear the... Um, uh, yeah, the jackal was the one that we could hear the most. Um, when I lived in the city, there was a zoo close by about eight kilometers from me and you could hear the lion during the night there because their sound travels in the evening very much so in the dark those sounds travel uh, you got quite used to it and uh, it, so it, it was something that was easy to to listen to right. Ooh, how far are you from Sydney oh that's on the opposite side there Sydney's in the east uh, east coast so it's a uh, two hours or three hours flying time to oh. the opposite side, yeah. No, I'm a, on the west coast. I'm in the only yeah, city on the yeah. west coast. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful little city, Perth, uh, on the west mm. coast. We're very, very fortunate to be in such a, an awesome city uh, on on the west coast. Right now, uh, I think we are almost done with our encounters for the day. Oopsie, wrong thing. Press the wrong button. And yeah, thank you everyone for being in class today. Uh, if you've got any pictures or uh, things that you've done with wild animals, won't you send them all uh, uh, your encounters with the wild animals like yours, Shirley, with the skunk? You can send your oh. stories to Liz. Uh, and also Donna, you've got some wonderful stories to send. Um, and then Liz will put them up on the website so that uh, everybody can share your stories as well. Um, and if you want a recording of the session, it's at Help It Get Set Up. And of course, we still do Australian animals and African animals. I think it's more Australian animals tomorrow or the next day. Um, and then uh, also other classes I do are, are upcycling and our me time recycling, which is all for us. Things that we can do um, and my children's ones we've put aside until um, July when it's holiday time. Right. So you will get some class notes and um, you will also get uh, different ideas that um I will give you a variety of ideas of other classes. They are rather arbitrary, so sometimes they don't have anything to do with what we've been doing. But I try and choose as best I can because they are already preset there for us. You'll also get a feedback. So if there's any ideas as to how to improve, different things you would like. Um, we've had uh, people asking for different classes and some of the classes we've been able to uh, accommodate. And I'm sure we'll be accommodating a lot more of the classes. So if you've got things you would like, please put them down because then we can look at them and see if we can include them in, in the classes. Um, uh, so that would be awesome if you can do that and then once you've booked we now have a, a link called invite a friend uh, where because it's so much more fun if you've got a friend in the class as well uh, and so you can send them a link and they are able to then join us there as well so that is awesome and if there's any group or people that you think might be benefit from being able to join our free classes please let them know at help it get set up and they will then be able to contact them as well. So thank you 
very much, everyone. I hope you've had fun uh, in the class today, heard some super stories from lots of people, which was really great. Thank you so much, Donna, for all your stories. They really made for it. And Shirley as well. Everybody else who was listening and Pam as well. So, yeah, I, I hope all of you, Pam, Wanda, Shirley, Beverly, Donna, Melinda, and Karen came in quite late, but that's great to still have you with us, Karen. Um, and I hope to see all of you again soon. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Bye.